every single time I mention shooting at any distance, well, that's unethical in a hunting situation, or that's way too hard of a shot with an entry level rifle. And so I'm taking a very cheap, regular Bagara B14R, <laughs> and we're gonna take it out into the field and see if we can make a very first round impact at a target. Let's go. Step number one, you gotta mount your scope properly. So the scope we're gonna put on here is an inexpensive Blackhound 4 to 14 by 44 scope. I know what you're saying. Jim, I watched your video of the best scope under 500 and you didn't like that scope. Well, the company contacted me afterward and they tracked down the serial number to see what had happened with this scope. And as it turns out, so I had tried to buy their scope for the review. I prefer to buy products when I can. And they were out of stock online, so they said, well, we'll just ship you one so that we can participate in the review. Cool. Well, because they were out of stock, an employee had grabbed one from the return pile and sent that to me. And that's why um, we saw that error in there. And so I'm testing out this blackout and see how it does in this video. So with scope mounting, it has to be low and level. I am really specific on this with my scopes. I've shot very slow motion uh, video of rifles and I feel like that is a perfect amount of clearance. If the scope's too high, you're not gonna get a good cheek weld here. At 100 yards, it's a, it, you're barely gonna make much of a difference, but at long range, everything has to be right. Same thing with leveling the reticle. You know, if it's pretty much level, you're gonna be fine at 100 yards. But if you're shooting a thousand yards with a 308 and your reticle is just 1% off, we have that error. Well, you're gonna miss by 8.75 inches. Now we are to step two. We gotta get this gun sighted in. So this is our new shooter, Jake. <laughs> so I'm showing him how to bore sight. So we just took the bolt out and he's looking down the bore of the barrel that we have pointed down to a target a hundred yards out and he's getting it rested on the sandbag so that he can see straight through there. And then he's adjusting the reticle of the scope up to where, uh, where the bore of the barrel matches it. That's gonna get us bore sighted really close. And then we're gonna start putting rounds down range. If you shoot more than five, six shots to sight in, something went wrong. You really should be able to do it in just a few shots. Now that we've sighted in, I want to shoot a group on center where the rifle is cold. And so usually when you're sighting in, you know, you're shooting five, six shots, you know, bullets are walking around. Now the rifle's a little bit warm. And so give the gun five minutes, let it cool down, because if you're hunting especially, you know, it's going to be that first shot that matters and the gun's going to be cold. So let the gun fully cool down. And then I want to take a good three shot group right at the center. Sometimes what I see when sighting in is people walk the shot around and as soon as they hit a bullseye, they say, sight it in and the gun's warm. And also like, what if just that shot was off by half an inch and you're still not actually sighted in. So after it cools down that three shot group, this also let me look at the shooter and see how he was doing to make sure a brand new shooter could shoot a one inch group and he did. He actually shot a three quarter MOA group and this is a brand new shooter. This is literally the first time he has ever shot a rifle prone. Next, and this is a really important step. You can take the ammo and look on the box and see the feet per second that it's advertising. That could be off by as much as 100 feet per second. And so at a long range, that's just not enough accuracy to really be able to dial this into your app. So you really need a chronograph. A chronograph is an indispensable tool. If you're reloading, if you're shooting long range, you've got to have one. I have the lab radar. It's very advanced and really cool, but it's not super reliable. Um, I just have so many problems with it just not triggering sometimes I'm shooting and it just doesn't record anything, especially with the suppressor, but sometimes not even suppressed. It, it's, ah, I kind of wish I had bought the Magneto speed instead and it's way less expensive. So we check our speed and we're getting 2,700 feet per second, almost on the nose. 
Okay, so take that left hand and curl it back under. Yeah, perfect. And you're just squeezing that sandbag to manipulate the height exactly. And you're just gonna pull that trigger super slow. Okay, so I saw your trigger. Um, you're kind of like ready, 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 fire. And instead of ready, 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 fire, I try to get, there's a tiny bit of wobble, there just always is. Let that happen. Just pull it so slow until it happens to break. And you're just trying to keep it steady on the target as you do that. Perfect. At that time, it surprised me more. And as you get used to the trigger, I mean, you'll know when it's going to go. And that's okay. This time, work on the follow-through that your head stays right down on the stock. Nothing moves. Okay, as you're doing the dry fire, this didn't matter so much at 100 yards, but now we got to make sure that bubble level is perfectly centered. If it's if the gun isn't perfectly up and down, it messes with the scope's angle of sight, and you're going to miss at this distance. Now, this hand, you may want to kind of scoot it forward a little bit mm -hmm. so it's not such a reach to the trigger. Yeah. And you want to have like a medium firm grip on the gun so that you can control the recoil, but you're not death gripping anything. Step six, you need to get a range. Uh, we tested a bunch of range finders, uh, I guess about a year ago, and you can check out that video to see which one we recommended. But brand new to me is this Vortex Fury HD 5000 AB. So these are range finders built into the binocular, which is so nice, it just skips a step for me. But this also has applied ballistics, which we actually won't use in this video. It's important when you're ranging to be sure you are precise. You know, if you're getting something that's on the top of a hill or something, well, if you miss by an inch, now you may range something that's 50 yards behind. So range it several times if you're going at a target go to the base, the T-post at the bottom where it hits the ground. That's the best spot to uh, be checking your range. Be sure you get your range precisely. Now we need to get our dope, our information, so that we know how we should adjust the scope to make sure we can make that 500-yard shot on the very first try. So I'm going to show you here the app that I use for ballistics. But first, this is going to sound like an ad, but um, I want to show you Telegram. You guys, YouTube is killing. I mean, it's killing us gun channels. Uh, it just enacted new rules in September. They're psycho. I mean, it's bonkers, the stuff that they won't allow. They totally demonetized that video I did of the best rifle brands. Um, you, can't, you can talk about one rifle, but you can't compare it to other different brands. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy the rules they have. So I started this, it just go get the Telegram app. It's free, I know, new app, nobody wants to do that, but go get the new Telegram app. We have a great group here um, of people that have joined in here. Just click the link uh, at backfire.tv slash Telegram. You'll be in this app and this is where all the conversation is happening now because I can post videos, I can do live streams of stuff that YouTube ridiculously won't allow. Okay, end of commercial. Let's go to the Hornady app here. Hornady is awesome. This is called Ford Off. You build in your different guns. I uh, have, I put this in the Sig Cross profile just because I was hurrying. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to set your muzzle velocity, which I set at 2700 um, from the chronograph. Then you'll set your zero range. We ranged at, at 100 yards. Sight height, it's usually around 1.5 inches, but you need to measure from the bore of your barrel to the center of your, your scope to know the exact sight height. Uh, your barrel twist rate, um, and really that's all we're going to, to worry about. Okay, and now we're going to get our range. So we're shooting exactly 500 yards. We've put a metal chicken out at 500 yards that we're shooting at. Now the wind, you just say what the direction of the wind is. It's about here and is three miles per hour. And so now we see exactly what our correction is in the bottom left, 9.82 MOA up. And so we make that adjustment in the scope and 
if we have the chronograph, if we are sighted in perfectly at 100 yards, our, our scope is set up properly, and if this Blackhound scope tracks properly at 500 yards, we should be able to make a 500 yard impact. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to live fire. Usually when this happens, everybody throws everything out the window that we just talked about because <laughs> you're worried about recoil. This gun this is a 6.5 Creedmoor. It has about as much recoil as those uh, frozen Pillsbury things that you got to open and it pops, the little cylinder. Yeah, but those are terrifying, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this will not hurt you, so don't flinch. Just do the exact same thing. Okay, here we go. This is the moment of truth. This is, our shot is at precisely 500 yards, way out at the base of the mountain, about right there. Jake is set up to shoot here. We're doing a little dry fire practice here, make sure we're totally set. Perfect. That's a good looking shot. All right, Let's see if we got it. It was hard to tell from back there. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh man, that is on the money. Yes. Okay, there you go. Yep, and that's after it fell down. We we're shooting at it again. You can see these at an angle. A couple of headshots. So. This would be the first shot, right? It yeah. Standing up. Yeah, that's the only one that was standing up, and you can tell the direction of it. <laughs> that was perfect. I think that's a kill. Bam! Shot.